Who is this guy? What are you doing in my studio, bro? Whoa, hey, hey, what's going on, Robert? Michael, what are you doing in here? I don't have Sony cameras, so I was thinking about, you know, maybe checking out what you got here. <laughs> in your bar for a little bit. All right, all right. I'm here with Michael <laughs> Padilla. Up? He is a, I'm a, almost a luxury photographer. Yes. He charges very, very high. And he's also now a real estate agent. So how do you make money being a photographer and now being a real estate agent? That's a great question. And I'll get into that with everybody as soon as we go over what's in my gear bag. Oh, teaser. Well guys, it really doesn't matter what gear you use. It matters how you use it and how you create with it. That really matters. So let's come check it out. What kind of bag do you have? This is a mind shift, which is made by Think Tank. And it's, I'm not sure what the bag is called anymore or if they even make it. It's actually like a hiking backpack, which I got. I was doing more hiking when I bought this like in 2015 or something like that. What I love about it, it has big pockets to hold a wide mouth water bottle. Oh, yeah, that's huge. Yeah, so pockets are nice and wide. I'm mostly a portrait studio photographer. Was oh, that your picture right there? That is not me, but I took that picture. If anybody knows, that is uh, model actress from New York, Marissa Roper. Give her a follow on Instagram. Okay, let's see what you got. And it's got a lot of zippers. Can you fit a laptop in there? You can put a laptop in here. You can actually put your iPad in here as well in storage, raincoat, stuff like that if you're taking it out for uh, hiking and stuff like that. So, bam, there it is. Wow. Dude, I didn't know you were a Canon. I thought you were Nikon. Yeah, it's no, I I've just I stuck with Canon just because that's what was my first camera I got and just kind of just went with it. I like Nikon. I use that with uh, one of the other portrait photographer buddies of mine when I do school photos and stuff like that. He, he uses Nikon. Yeah. So this here is the Canon R5. Dude, you got an so R5. I did. Kind of jealous, bro. Yeah. I got the R. I'm still. We're still shooting with the R. And so you're primarily using that for photos, not videos. Correct. This is the 24 to 105. And oh, the reason yeah. why I got this one versus F4, the right? yeah, yeah F4 is because since I'm doing a lot of portraits and stuff like that, I don't need to stop down like wide open. I'm usually shooting around F8 and stuff like that. And in studio, that's kind of perfect. You don't really need to, don't try and be a hero and get like really super shallow depth of field that you're getting. Studio well, studio. look, I got the F14. I'm shooting with the R. This is an old, old camera, 14 and 35, F4. So guys, you don't, it doesn't even matter what F stop you shoot at. It's just how you use it. I mean, what, what was that taken with? <laughs> that was probably F, Eight, probably anywhere from like F5, See, six to F8. You guys don't, probably. it's always about the bokeh, you know? Yeah, and especially when you're doing indoor studio stuff, it doesn't matter, especially if it's like a um, plain seamless backdrop, doesn't, doesn't sure. matter. Unless it's all, it's actually reason. about the lighting, guys. Yeah. Lighting is everything. Man, absolutely, yeah. that's the most important thing. Okay, so, so you got that and you got a small rig cage, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. for trying to get into video. Um, so my next all right, what do you lens have? that I have, this is the 50 millimeter 1.2. Yeah, this one is the EF lens. So I have the R adapter. So this here this is the 17 to 40. Bought this many, many years ago. Again, this is the EF lens. This lens here is the only R lens. Especially because when I got that when I was doing a lot of more landscape and stuff like that, which I need shallow depth of field. Then I have the 100 macro. This one's an F2, 28, 28. EF as well. Yeah. yeah, they're all EF lenses except for that one when I bought the, mm -hmm. the R5 and then and then he's got his power zoom one. Yeah, this is the 70 to 200, again, EF. The non-image stabilized one, like an idiot, because I wanted to save some money. And I was like, <laughs> I can hand hold this, nope. <laughs> and then a couple other things I got in here. This is my trigger. I use Godox lights. So this is the Why flash you trigger. Why um, Price, it's reliable. I've, I've had mine, man, for years and They've, they've been consistent. Yeah. Uh, All right, well, look, okay, so that's the gear. So how do we price our packages? How do we make money through this stuff? So the first thing you have to do is figure out how much money you want to make. So as for me, and I won't go into like the prices that I charge because it just won't make sense to anybody. So in order to figure out what you should charge, you have to figure out what you're comfortable making for yourself. And so I came from working at, at the county. I used to work in divorce court, hearing people get divorced every day for 16 years. And so when I left there in 2020 during a pandemic to start full time as a portrait photographer, I had to figure out, well, how much how, how I'm going to get paid. Right. So at a minimum, I was like, well, the county, they were paying me like 28 and change. I'm at least at a minimum worth that because that's a job that 
anybody can do. I left and they just trained somebody else to do that same job. As a creative, as a portrait photographer, um, any kind of photographer, or if you're doing video, anything like that, this is a creative industry. And the work that I do, the work that you do, Robert, and anybody watching this, only you can do that. We can take three different photographers, the same subject, and we're all gonna photograph that person mm, differently, right? Yeah. So while anybody can be a photographer, the way you photograph, the way you service these people, it's different all so, across okay, the board. So then that means everybody's unique. So you and can absolutely. unique, so pricing wise, it's up to you. Exactly, it's up to you. So that's what I'm saying. So I figured out, okay, what do I wanna make per hour? Okay, then how many photo shoots do I wanna do to, to reach that. And then it's not only that, but you have to remember you're running a business, right? So you have to set aside money for your business. And as a business, you also have to pay taxes because you're no longer working for somebody else who's paying your taxes yeah. for you. Yeah, and there's a lot of costs to spend yeah. for the business. So, so in other words, you're, you're dividing whatever you're charging, you're dividing it into three. I'm paying myself a third, I'm paying my business a third, and I'm setting a third side for taxes so there's no surprises at the end of the year. So figure out what you want to make per hour, divide that into three, and how much, how many photo shoots you need to do to reach that aspect. And so for me, as a luxury portrait photographer, I spend on average about 18 hours per client. And that includes finding wow. the client. That took 18 hours because you yeah. do the consulting, you do advising. Yeah. Yeah. His, his whole thing is like an experience. Yeah, I'm doing a wardrobe consultation. So nobody steps into my space on the day of the portrait shoot without just they've never seen me before. So I'll go to the client's home to do a wardrobe and style consultation. I'll actually do some posing with them to so they're not, you know, stepping in on the photo day being like, okay, why am I posed like this? This feels uncomfortable and stuff like that. So you kind of train them and teach them and coach them along so that way they can practice at home before they get into the studio. And if I'm hiring a hair and makeup artist, that that's a cost as well. And then you get to figure out the time that it takes to edit all, all of your stuff and then get it out to your clients. And so I do also in-person reveal, whether that's in Zoom or have the people come to oh, me. Interesting. Yeah, because I don't want, I used to do when I was like a, a run and gun shoot and burn photographer, I used to do um, studio, like the, 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 the reveal online and clients can go, they have their own individual web page. They can go look at photos. You have the little watermark really wouldn't get people buying because they would just take screenshots. They don't really care that there's a watermark there. Especially nowadays, they can just edit that out really easy. Um, well, here, here, let me interrupt you. How did you How did you make this structure for your own business? Just through trial and error? A lot of mentors. So I would hire, I hire mentors, they, they would teach me, get into communities and see, that's another aspect of photography that, or, or any creative aspect that people don't think of. There's the cost of not only this gear here, which you know, Robert, it's expensive, right? That's all aspects that you have to think about. There's that, there's the, the number of photo education communities that I'm a part of to continue to, to grow and learn and, and up my game. You know, that's the one fun, exciting thing about any creative aspect like photography or something like that. I strive to be the best that I can be and you're never gonna be the best photographer. Like that's subjective. So and find so, someone so, better than you. <laughs> yeah, but not only that, but you're always, there's always room to grow and that yeah. excites me. Getting into those communities, finding a mentor who's done it before and can teach you, that's how I learned, okay, this is how I can price and run a business. And don't think that you have to run like a luxury business because some people, they don't feel comfortable saying like, you know what, here are my luxury packages and they start at a couple, you know, a thousand bucks or a couple thousand dollars. Okay, okay so how much is a package? Just so we can tell the viewers. <laughs> you guys are gonna be shocked because I was shocked. So my, my luxury package, this starts at 2100 and that includes eight images. And eight images for $2,000 plus dollars. Woo, this guy did it, dude. And that's not even, it's funny because a lot of people in the communities that I, that I run with, I'm probably like in the middle of the road there because there's some photographers and one, oh, one here who I mentored under and, and learned from, Jerry Guiones, is a lot more than I am. What um, do you charge? Um, I, will, <laughs> I won't tell you, but um, you can con your photos. <laughs> you can get, get him, and he's worth every penny of it. Like he, his stuff is is above and beyond. Like in the, the the amount of service that he provides, and that's the thing. You're providing a service to your clients, right? So these are just tools. I always tell my audience, look, you can spend all this money go in debt, but if you don't know how to use these tools, if you don't know how to price packages, if you don't know how to 
talk to clients, right? Be, a, you know, client services and being a people person, that's that's not going to make you the money. Yeah. And so it depends what, what you want to do. I would start off with one lens. Like this is what I mostly use. And a lot of this gear was acquired over time, like 10, 15 years working through, at the county and just spending my money. And it was just a hobby at first. If I was starting brand new, it was like, you know, what, I want to get into photography. I'd get a reliable camera, a reliable lens, something like this. And if you're doing studio work, this 24 to 105 is fantastic. If you know who Lindsay Adler is, a fashion photographer in New York, this is what she primarily uses. So if it's good for her, it's good for me. So, so I'm saying, and then as you start learning and growing, you're like, you know what, I wanna get more creative, start adding more lenses and stuff like that to, to your arsenal. Primary thing you wanna learn is lighting. That's the most important thing about photography. It's the light. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter what camera and lens you're using. I know there's lighting is kind of, we kind of messed up. There's a big reflection, but also guys like, you know, it's YouTube. This is kind of a chaotic vlog, but last words for the audience, man. Like what is a great, great tip um, as for somebody who's just starting out, like what would you tell your younger self and maybe the audience if you, you know, if you knew all the knowledge today, what would you tell your younger self? Learn business. Photography uh -huh. is, the, the, the minimum, it's like 10% of my business is taking pictures. The rest of it is either doing admin stuff or learning how to run a business, how to price yourself, how to provide exceptional service to the client so that they see the value of your work and they're like, damn, this was like, you charge this much, I spend this much if I'm buying wall art and someone's spending like $10,000 because they want to fill their homes with these giant, framed photos of their family and stuff like that, they feel like it's worth it. All right, guys, well, let me know what you think. Follow Michael in the links below. Subscribe to his profile. Here's his website. If you're in Vegas area, hit him up and uh, be ready to spend some money. <laughs> <laughs>